Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Short Attention Span Garage. This is the June update. Progress on the Cobra. Got a few things I banged out throughout the month. Starting with, start with the front of the engine. Um, you might remember previous video. I only had the three idler or the three pulleys on here: crank, water pump, and alternator. I just didn't have the best. The best feeling of it so what i did was i went to advanced auto i got just some random idler pulley i made some steel bracketry out of quarter inch thick and some square tube three quarter inch square tube and bolted it right to the head and uh you you can see what's going on it's basically just an idler um so that wraps it around the water pump a lot better and then also i moved the mount for the alternator so instead of the alternator going like it, was, it used to go up and down like this when it would rotate on that pivot right there. Now it rotates right there, so it goes more like this. And it does a better job tightening the belt when you adjust the uh, adjustment bar up there. And I painted it all um, just to, you know, protection, coating and whatnot. I also changed up the oil pressure sending thing. It's It's just... I just cleaned up the copper. There was a there was a metal thing that was there that came from the factory that looked like crap, so now it's all brass. Um, and then also I changed out this fitting on the coolant line and this fitting to good silicon. It's actually a reducer, but now it doesn't leak, so I'm happy with that. Um, it's a little pulley. I didn't like where the throttle used to pivot. The mount for the throttle used to be on this plate right here and when you'd push on the throttle it would go like more down the way the sweep was and I didn't like that because the other the other two pedals they go straight back so as you can see I just whipped up something out of angle iron and moved the mount so now when I push the throttle it goes back not down at the same time or not down and back at the same time it goes more straight back and it feels a lot better <clears throat> Change the master cylinder for the clutch. When I did get it running, I think that was that was part of what what my issue was was the clutch sweep was basically the entire friction zone. Um, it's because the master cylinder for the clutch was the same size. No, it was smaller than the slave cylinder down by the transmission. This is one and an eighth now. And if you know anything about hyd hydraulic theory, basically, now that that's a, a hell of a lot bigger than the one below, um, the clutch pedal barely has to move, and I get the entire sweep of the friction zone, and then the f probably the first half of the pedal sweep is all clutch, and then the second half is dead air. And I like it like that. Um, I also moved this switch. This switch, how it was set up before, it goes underneath and as soon as the switch changes state, it's in like the first 20% of the sweep of the, of the clutch pedal. That's telling the starter it can crank over even though you still got friction in the clutch plates. And now you gotta push the clutch in completely to change the state of this switch for the starter, which this is not part of the factory five thing. It's just something I fabricated up and painted. Um, let's see what else. Working on the dash wiring. Um, I got really frustrated with the size of that. First of all, when you buy these Cobras, they come with a gauge pack. We'll get to the dash in a second, but this gauge pack has connectors for all the gauges. Speedometer, tack. It's, it's got all these, these fun little connectors and everything. So right, right here. There's a lot of it as well. You can see where all the wires come out. Um, the way they set it up is you can go correct directly to the sensors with the cables. Those two black cables over there. I got our oil pressure and water temp. Um, or you can go right to the you can go right to the gauges. Or you can run it into the harness and then out of the harness right to the gauges. So there's a shitload of redundant wiring in behind the dash. Well, I cleaned a lot of it up. And this thing, this this was the dash harness. It used to be this elephant trunk of, of unnecessariness. Um, clean that all up nice. So now I just 
I, I used to be an electrician. I love clean wiring. So it just went up my spine that there was a bunch of useless wiring in my harness. So cleaned it all up. Now it's gone. Um, since we're talking about gauges, here's my dash. I skinned it with carbon fiber because there was some damage on it way over on the around the uh, glove box. Um, I like how it turned out. By the way, this is not the gauge that's going to stay there. That's my wide band. So when I'm driving it, I can actually tune it and get some really good AFR readings. But um, you can see how I got some holes poked in the top. They'll be easily removable because I put some aluminum angle pieces here with a rev nut on the inside of it and this is just a 10 by 32 brass screw you get the idea five of them um what else was there clutch idler pulley throttle pivot yeah that's it for that's it for june um the exhaust is technically july i did that today i'm putting i know i had plans to do I'll cover this more in July, but basically I had plans to do an undercar exhaust from Spinworks, but that's $700 for everything I need, and I don't really want to spend that yet. I'd rather go-kart it for the time being and, and buy the exhaust parts in a month or two when I when it's money's a little freer. So I just threw them on, and I didn't mount them. You can see I got a ratchet strap suspending them in place just so they don't fly around. I'm not putting the doors on anyway or the body, so it doesn't matter what they're hanging from. That way I can at least drive it around and I'm not waking the dead. Anyway, that's June. Later, everybody.